Administering intraarticular injection of Monovis is an aseptic procedure. The cleansing solution I use is chlorhexidine as well as povidone iodine. After cleaning the knee joint, I will proceed to anesthetize the injection site. Usually done with a 5cc syringe using 5cc of lignocaine or xylocaine. The monovis comes in a syringe. After removing the syringe, we attach it to a size 21 gauge needle. And after injecting all of the monovis, we'll clean up the knee joint and put a tagadam pad, which is a waterproof dressing. I'm giving a monovis visco supplementation injection to Miss Tay. She's 50 year old female and she's having this for the third time. Before this whole setup was done, I've actually used some hibis scrub to clean up the joint because the reality of the procedure is very important. Now I'm going to clean up with chlorhexidine. After chlorhexidine, I'll use povidone iodine. There are two uh, approaches to giving this injection. One is the superior lateral, which is just underneath the lateral petal femoral joint and the other one is the anterior medial approach. I generally prefer the anterior medial approach because firstly, I think it's easier to palpate for the pace between the bones and secondly, I find it's less painful because the chance of hitting the cartilage or the bone is much less using this process, process uh, this uh, approach. When we do this procedure, we have to locate the anterior medial portal. The way we identify the position is I look for the medial femoral, medial border of the patella, the femoral condyle, and the tibial condyle. Usually, in between, right in the middle of this triangle, is an empty space, and you can feel it giving way, just like walking into a quicksand. You go further up, you press, it's hard, it's the bone. You go further down, you press, it's hard, it's the tibial condom. Go to medially, you feel the patella. So generally, it's right in the centre of this area where the dimple is. I tend to go a bit more medial because the chance of hitting synovium, chance of hitting the fat pad, uh, which can cause swelling of the fat pad through the injection, uh, can cause significant pain. So I tend to go more on the lateral, as medial aspect of this triangle. I usually use uh, 5 cc of 1% lignocaine or xylocaine. And this is the time where uh, you tell the patient that this, once this is given, there will be no pain. This will give some reassurance to patient that they will not feel too anxious about the procedure. After I palpating it, I'm using a size 25 gauge needle and the trick to have a less traumatic injection is to do this injection slowly because the distension while you inject the local anesthesia can cause significant amount of pain. As you go in, you pump in a little bit of lignocaine, especially if you the patients who are very concerned and very worried about pain, you can reassure them, tell them some jokes while you give the injection. So I usually talk to them about their family and I usually can distract them with some of these questions and patients usually are calm down. If you hit something very hard, you know, you're, most of the time you're hitting on the femoral condyle then you have to adjust your position of your needle. You can see it goes in very easily. We are into the joint, a slight pain. And that's the pain because of the distension. So, good point is that when you give the local anesthesia, do not inject too fast. Go very slowly. Take your time. Okay. We stay, that will be the most painful part of the procedure. You can relax now. We wait for about two minutes or so for the local anesthesia to work. Usual 
needle is sufficient for most Asian patients. My patient is very big, very thick, uh, very big knees, and there are a lot of swelling around the knee joint. I think this normal needle may not be long enough. Sometimes you can order a slightly longer needle, which is available in the market, and that kind of needle is probably more appropriate in that case. Okay, this is the Monovis that I'm going to give. Uh, it's four mils of Monovis. I usually use a size 21 gauge needle. The local anesthesia was given with a size 25 gauge needle because this is usually more viscous and it's better to inject with. Always look at the patient's eyes, the face while you are going in. You see it goes in and then very nicely. And once you go in very smoothly like this and you inject and goes in smoothly. At the end of it, remove it. It's very important to press it for at least a minute. Sometimes there's a bit of hematoma from the injection site. Is it okay, Mr. Yes, no pain at all. No pain at all, very good. Thank you. I actually give this one last drop and let patient feel it. Put them on the finger and let them feel it. I think this is a positive feedback on the effect of the lubricant. Patient feel that oh, it's very oily. If patient don't feel it themselves. They won't know how oily it is, how viscous it is, and therefore with that feeling, there's a positive feedback, and then patients usually feel much better with it. We need to clean up and keep the wound dry. I usually cover them with a waterproof dressing. After doing the dressing, I usually like to bend, flex and extend the knee. This is to let the monovis to circulate around the joint and also to test whether there is actually a swelling of the synovium or the fat pad. Generally, if the patient has severe pain while doing this, there's a high chance that the monovis may have gone into the synovium or the fat pad that can cause pain and patients will not be able to bend so smoothly like this. So, at the end of it, we have to advise patients to continue taking medicine for the cartilage, they're taking glucosamine, do the appropriate exercises to strengthen the quadriceps, as well as to avoid activities like squatting, excessive climbing, or carrying heavy stuff. And that will actually cause the knee joint, which can cause the knee joint to deteriorate faster. So, uh, activity is in, uh, modification is important for patients with arthritis. Okay, Mr. you can go for shopping now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye.